Hello everyone. This time around I want to talk about one particular stupid thing I see software developers doing all the time. And it's common enough that it's gotten into big projects like WordPress as well. Not just the small things done by uh, amateur type developers. And now a case could be made that much of WordPress development is done by talented amateurs but it's uh, it's not something that uh, is relevant to this particular discussion. I see professionals and amateurs doing this sort of thing all the time. Now the thing that I see them doing is encoding settings wrong. More particularly, if they have, say, a URL prefix setting for a site, which WordPress has, then come along sometime down the road and you store a setting for something, uh, say it's a reference to the uh, image in the uh, site banner, then it'll store it as the full URL including that, that prefix. That is the thing that's done wrong. And this isn't necessarily WordPress itself, the stuff that's officially distributed with WordPress that does that. I haven't actually done an audit to see if it does but a lot of third-party themes and plugins and that sort of thing do exactly this sort of thing. And it's likely because they've just taken the lazy way out. They haven't actually understood what they're doing, or if they do understand what they're doing, they don't understand why it's a bad thing to do. So that site banner thing, you encode the whole URL to it in there. Okay, that's great, it works fine. So you don't see any problems when you test it. It's working fine on your site. Now say you decide to change the domain on your site. Okay, so you go ahead, you get your new domain, you configure up your web server. You, you might not even have to relocate the actual WordPress installation to do this, and maybe you're just pointing the domain at the site. And now you change it to refer to the new domain, and you deconfigure the old domain. Maybe you're getting the new domain because your old one was taken away from you for some reason. Who knows? Anyway, now you go and visit your site. Uh, well, you update your WordPress configuration so that it refers to the new domain, and there's issues with that as well, uh, but that's a different issue. Uh, you go in there, and... You look at your site and your header image is missing using this broken image. And if you're fairly savvy, you'll go and look at the media attached to the, the page and you'll see it's referring to your old domain when it tries to load the image. And you'll be thinking, well, why? I changed the uh, site prefix. Why is it trying to load it off of there? And then you start looking around, you find the setting for that, and you see it's got the whole URL, URL in there with the old domain. So you go in there and you change it and now everything's working. Well, that's not too bad if you've got one or two things like that. But what if you have a whole raft of things like that? Well, then you've got a major problem. And this is why storing the content, like using the contents of another configuration option in the value you store is a really, really dumb idea. Presumably, the item is a configuration option because it might change. So storing it in other places is just completely stupid when you get down to it, if you actually think it through. So what should you be doing? Well, anytime you're going to store something, you should take a look to see if it is a URL, and if the URL prefix matches the, the prefix of that URL that you're storing, you should take that prefix off and just store the remainder. If you do that religiously in all of your stuff, you will find that when you have to go and relocate the site or change that configuration option, it will actually behave as expected. And you won't have issues like all of the settings for your theme in WordPress disappearing when you uh, change things. 
with this WordPress case specifically, you might think, well, I could just take a database dump and do a search and replace on it, right? And that will fix everything. Well, no, it doesn't. And that's because a lot of themes and so on will store a big lump of settings in one big chunk, and that lump will be a PHP serialized array. So then if you search and replace in that, sure, it will replace the domain in, or the prefix in that blob, but unless what you're replacing it with is exactly the same length, it will fail because of the way the PHP serialization works. Now, I'm not going to comment on whether using a PHP serialized array in settings stored in a database table is a particularly smart thing to do. A, a case can be made either way, and it depends greatly on the specific circumstances. All that you need to know is that if that is being done by any part of your, your uh, WordPress installation, if you relocate it and any of those have a domain stored in it, you can't use the database search and replace method to fix it. That means you're going to need to do something that goes and reads everything, updates it, and writes it back out using the WordPress API. Now, there is a plugin or two that do that, but they're really hard to find. And it does actually manage the, the relocation properly. Uh, which is good, uh, if you know that you need to do that, then it's fine. But the whole point here is that you shouldn't need to do that. If things were stored properly, then that wouldn't ever be an issue. There is the case where you have full absolute URLs in page content. And that is a harder problem to solve. You'd have to post-process any page edits and replace the URLs appropriately. That's a little bit fragile to do and it may not be worth doing. And also, HTML doesn't care if you change the length of a URL in a search and replace. So searching and replacing in the page contents is probably a reasonable thing to do. Even better would be as if the WordPress interface, the GUI and so on for editing things, wouldn't always encode the full URL when you do a, a search and uh, add an image to say, or a link to another part of your site or something in your text. But that's a different issue altogether. That's just uh, user interface stupidity and uh, again, it's also storing the URL prefix, which it knows about when it's building the link through the GUI, but that doesn't stop someone from manually putting in a link, copying and pasting it. So you're almost certainly gonna get the odd bad link in, in that manner in the, uh, in the actual database. Uh, you know, like, uh, for instance, uh, Drupal actually does a reasonably decent job of handling the site prefix thing. It actually tends not to store the site prefix as part of things, but you still end up with that particular problem with absolute links hard-coded in the, in the site content. And that's down to bugs in the users more so than bugs in the software. You just want to avoid creating that bigger bug where you're storing the actual current contents of one configuration setting as part of the value of another configuration setting. Don't do that. Now, it can require a little bit of tedious detail work to do this right, and it requires potentially some research and understanding the software that you're building for. So if you're building a plugin for WordPress or a theme, do not store settings in you know, do not store the contents of one setting as the value of another. Do not store the entire site URL in your settings. Now, I shouldn't have to say this, but as far as I can tell, pretty close to 100% of plugins and themes do this. And it's really, really, really unfortunate because it doesn't have to be that way. 
Now, I should point out, it's not just WordPress that does this. And you, it's not just software running web pages that does this. So if you're sitting back laughing at the idiot web designers because you build desktop applications or something, sit back and think about how you've designed your configuration settings for your desktop application. Does, does it have one path that specifies where the installation is and then, then a bunch of relative paths to the various pieces if it needs to store paths and configuration files? Or does it store 47 absolute paths? If you stored 47 absolute paths and don't have a base path configuration somewhere, okay, maybe that's reasonable, but you've committed a different sin. You're, you're uh, not giving a, a configuration setting where you really need one. And if you've got that base path setting and you, you're storing absolute paths to things within that base path, why? You've committed exactly the same sin. So this, this happens with things other than uh, web pages and, and, and web development. Uh, if you build your software so it has some base paths and some relative paths, then it becomes possible to pick up an installation and relocate it. Or it becomes, you know, and before you say, well, you never need to do that. Once you've installed it on the machine, it's just going to stay there. There are cases where you do need to relocate stuff. Say a disk gets full, and even in today's day, uh, to today's age of multi-terabyte hard drives, disks still get full. You may want to relocate a particularly large application from one disk to another, and that's almost certainly going to involve changing at least the base path to it. So before you get all um, smug because you don't do things like websites which get relocated all the time, think about it carefully. Uh, there, there are some things where it doesn't really make any sense to do that because the base path isn't really a base path, it's just a coincidence that the stuff is under the same folder. So you have to do this on a case-by-case -case basis. You have to examine it on a case-by-case -case basis and attempt to make the best call. Now, I'm, not, I'm going to be the first person to admit that it's not always obvious what you should do, so invariably you're going to mess it up at some point or another. Just make sure you've designed your configuration scheme so that you can add new settings in a way that doesn't break existing stuff so you can actually deal with it. That part's actually not very difficult. I guess the, the whole point of this is that if you're a software developer of any kind and you're implementing any kind of configuration options, just make sure you're using the configuration options that you have. Uh, if you know you don't need five options to specify the base installation path for a software package. You don't need three site prefix options. And I've seen that in uh, website code actually. You also don't need to be encoding that URL prefix in every configuration setting that refers to a file on the site which is what WordPress tends to do. So if you've got these settings, use them. Use them consistently. The settings are not useful if you don't use them consistently. Now, admittedly, if you've got a massive project that's already doing things badly, it's not an easy task to retrofit it retrofit a proper configuration system into it. So you'll often end up with this type of mess if you're attempting a retrofit. And these retrofits often never get finished. But if you're greenfielding a new design for a project, do avoid doing it. Do avoid this type of idiocy in the configurations. If everybody would pay attention to this, this basic 
situation, this principle, then a lot of web developers and other software users would have a much easier time doing the what should be the trivial parts of their jobs, which is moving things from one place to another after developing it. Anyway, that's enough of a rant for today. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.